How to set up OpenAL in C++ on Windows. Disclaimer, I am not an audio programmer. I'm a gameplay programmer. And this is a bit advanced, so if you're new to C++, you might have a bit of a hard time. Um, just expect to do a little bit of debugging. But for the most part, this video should show you everything you need to get it up and going. Be mindful of where you get OpenAL. The first hit on Google takes you to a download from Creative Labs. However, this OpenAL guide gives you a bit of history on this. It claims that Creative got a hold of the reference implementation and it is no longer free. The standard is still open and one implementation is OpenAL soft, which is what we'll use. You can find the OpenAL soft implementation on GitHub. Like most C++ libraries, it'll use CMake to build the project files. You'll need CMake to generate your Visual Studio project. CMake generates platform specific project files like Visual Studio solutions for Windows and Xcode projects for Mac. You can download CMake from their website. You may already have it. This is what CMake GUI looks like. To get OpenAL soft, click the code button and copy the repository URL. Create a new folder for your OpenAL download. If you don't have a Git client installed, you'll need to install that too. Explaining Git is a bit out of sight of the scope of this tutorial. Most of you will probably have heard of it though. We're just going to use Git to download the library straight from the source. Open Git bash in your new folder. Make sure the path is the correct folder. You don't want to download the repository into the wrong folder. Type git clone and paste the repository URL. Then type a period, which is short for cloning to the current folder. Hit enter. You should now be able to type ls to list the downloaded files in your directory. Change directory to the build folder. Do this by typing cd build. From here, invoke the cmake program and pass a dot dot argument so it knows to go one folder up and use the cmake list.txt file. This will build the Visual Studio projects in the build folder, but using the cmake from the folder above it. This will take some time. We will use the Visual Studio solution to compile OpenAL so we can use it in other Visual Studio projects. Open the openal.sln project. Open the Solution Explorer. Right-click on the topmost solution, Open AL. Build Solution. This will take a while. Note, I built it in the debug configuration, but you may want to build it on Release 2 for full game projects. Building it on Release is the exact same process, so I'll only do it for the debug configuration in this video. I got some warnings from the build, but no errors. In your build folder, find the debug folder. These are the library files. We will probably only need Open AL 32 files, but I will copy all of them for completeness sake. We're now ready to create our own project that will use OpenAL. I'll name mine Test OpenAL. Switch it over to the file view and create a folder for your new source files. Let's make a main method that we will use for testing sounds. Compile and run to generate the debug folders in our project. We want to put our .dll file in the folder with our executable. So copy and paste, but don't move the file because we need it for multiple places. Go to your folder with your games.sln file. Create a folder to put your library.h files. I'll call mine, my library includes. Go back to your downloaded OpenAL repository and find the .h header files. Go one folder above the build folder, go into the include folder. The include folder is typically where libraries will put the .h files you need to include. Copy and paste the al folder into your my library includes folder. The al folder contains all the .h files you'll need for OpenAL. Next, let's create a folder for our compiled library files. I'll call it my built libraries. Go into this folder. Since I built the debug version, I'm going to make a folder for debug. In that folder, create a folder for OpenAL. Go back to your downloaded OpenAL library. Go back into your build folder. Go into the build debug folder where we got the .dll from. Copy all the files, paste them in your OpenAL folder that you just made. We now need to configure the game project to use the built OpenAL library. Go to the Solution Explorer. Right click on this project. Note it isn't the topmost project. Go into the properties. Make sure you have all configurations selected. Go to VC++ directories. Find the include directories. This is how we'll tell Visual Studio's build system where to find the OpenAL include files. Click the drop down, then click edit. We need to paste the folder path to our include folder. We don't want to paste the exact path here because it'll break if we ever move our project around. Type dollar sign solution dir to generate the folder path to our .sln solution. This will update if we move it around on our hard drive. Committing that text, you should see the path it resolves to below. Find your My Library Includes folder. Paste the bit after the solution directory like this. Make sure the bottom directory path matches the My Library Includes path. Adjust it to be the same if they don't match. Mine did not match. I pasted one too many folders. Here's how I fixed it. Next, go to your library directory. We will have this point to our build library files. 
click the arrow, then edit. Again, we use the dollar sign, parenthesis, solution to error, close parenthesis. Find your My Built Library folder, go all the way down into the OpenAL folder. You should then see the built library files. Copy the part of this directory after the solution directory. You can fix this up later if you copy too much or too little like I did last time. Paste it after the solution directory, commit the text. Make sure the generated path matches the file path of the library. Go under the linker section. Go to input, find the additional dependencies. Copy the .lib file name for openal32.lib. Paste it in the additional dependencies box. Apply the changes. To test the include path, try to including al slash al.h. If it compiles, you have correctly set up the includes folder. If not, go back and look at the vc++ directories include section. Now you should be set up to run openal and hear sounds. If you don't know about loading audio files and using openal, I'm going to walk you through that now. OpenAL is a library for playing audio, not loading audio files. The complete OpenAL guide suggests a header-only library called AudioFile for recording.wave audio files. This is what I used. After recording this video, I realized that AudioFile is a GPL licensed library. At the end of the video, I'll provide an alternative that is a less restrictive license if you want to sell your games. Copy the repository GitHub URL like we did for OpenAL. Create a folder for the repository. Open git bash inside the new folder. Again, be sure the path looks right before cloning. You don't want to dump repository contents in the wrong folder. Type git clone, paste the repository URL, then type period so that it puts the repository in the current folder. The single header audiofile.h is what does the file loading. Copy audiofile.h. Go to your my library includes folder. Make a folder for the audiofile library. Paste the header in that folder. Grab a .wave sound file to test. You can get mine at the end of the video. Go into the folder with the project's name. Create a folder called sounds. This is what we will use for debugging the application. Paste the .wav file into the sounds folder. Go back and copy the sounds folder. Go back to the solution folder. Go into the exe's debug folder. You should see testopenl.exe if you built your project at least one time. Paste the sounds folder next to the .exe. This is how the exe will find the sounds when it runs directly. Try including audiofile.h and then build to make sure everything is working so far. I was able to build with some unsigned mismatch warnings in the audiofile header. I needed to make some tweaks to the audiofile.h to fix the warnings and format the data for OpenAL. You can get this version of my file later, but I wanted to show you what I needed to change. For the science of unsigned warnings, I just went into the audiofile header and the functions added the warnings and make sure to change the usage of int to size t, which is unsigned. I also made sure to return a failure value if you pass a negative number to this function. OpenAL requires its audio data in PCM format. PCM stands for Pulse Code Modulation. Think of it as like raw audio data. The paper Game Audio via OpenAL is an excellent resource on this and other OpenAL things. I'll provide a link in the description. You can see from the visual from the paper, PCM is the digital version of the sound. The paper shows that WAV files contain PCM data and other metadata about the file. We only need the PCM data, not the metadata about the WAV file. The audiofile.h library exposes the PCM data, but in the wrong format. It converts it to regular floats and doubles. We need it in the integer bit depth format. The audio file library converts samples back into PCM data when you use it to write a file. So all we need to do is extract the PCM conversion part into its own function and we'll get the format OpenAL needs. So this is what I did. I found the function that saved the WAV file, found the data chunk section, copy and pasted that into its own function, formatted, fixed up a few compilation issues, and now we can use this function to write sample data to an STD vector of bytes and pass that to OpenAL. Let's write some code using OpenAL to play a mono and stereo sound source. This is very similar to OpenGL code. In order to help ourselves when things are wrong, we check OpenAL for errors in our usage. I'm using a macro for this so we can get code injection for free rather than having to make function calls. We use al get error to get the current error off the stack from OpenAL. If it returns something other than no error, then print that out to the standard error. Next, I'll make a macro that we can wrap function calls in to automatically check errors. The first thing we want to do is find the audio device for the computer. We can get a string representation of it from alc get string. With that string, we ask OpenAL to open the audio device for use. If it failed to open the device, then log it. You can log the name of the device by getting the string from ALC device specifier. So now we have access to the audio device. We want to create context for on that device. Each context is basically its own state machine with its own sound sources. More information about that in the game audio via open AL document in the description. We want to create a context for our player. We only need to pass the device, not any attribute lists. Now we need to make this context active so that the state changes we make will be applied to the player. State changes are like moving sound sources, etc. This returns false if it failed to make the context active. So check for success and log and return if you failed. Oh yeah, update the other failure to return to. Now that we have a context for the player, we need to configure the listener. The listener is the recipient of hearing sounds. OpenAL tracks them in 3D space. Every context has one and only one listener. 
Let's wrap our function calls in the ALC macro, which will do the error checking for us. IL listener 3 f updates a listener property that has three float values. Since position has x, y, and z, it makes sense to use the 3f version of this function. By passing al position, we tell open al to update the listener position state. Another three float value is velocity. Let's set that to all zeros. In order for OpenAL to know which ear will hear more sound, it needs to know the orientation of the listener. It figures that out by having you provide the player's basis vectors. You provide a front vector and a player's up vector. It's probably figuring out the right vector by using the cross product. OpenAL wants two vectors as an AL float array of size 6. The first three floats are the player's front vector. The second three floats are the player's up vector. AL listener FV can be used to pass a pointer of floats. Give it the AL orientation value and the vectors to update the player's front and up vectors. Now we need to store our sounds and buffers that AL can use. I have two sounds, test sound dot wave, which is stereo, and test sound mono dot wave, which is mono. Stereo files have samples for both ear speakers. Mono plays the same sound for both ears. In open AL, 3D position works for mono sounds, but not stereo sounds, because stereo sounds are typically music files. Let's use the GPL audio library dot h library to load a file. Create an audio file object, ask it to load a file by providing it a path. If it fails to load, log and return. Create a vector of bytes to hold the PCM data. Use the function we added to load the data into a vector of bytes. Now we can create a buffer in the OpenAL device for this data. We need to tell OpenAL the format of this data. That is, is it stereo, is it mono, what is the bit depth of each sample, etc. I'm going to make a lambda to do this since we need to do it for both our mono and stereo file. Buffer creation in OpenAL is similar to OpenGL. You create n number of buffers with ALGen buffer. This takes a pointer to an ALU int that gets updated to the buffer's index. We buffer the loaded data into the buffer with AL buffer data. First, give it a buffer index. Second, give it the data format, as in AL format stereo 16. Then give it a byte pointer to the data, which we can get from our vector of bytes. Tell it how many elements are in the byte array. And lastly, tell it the sample rate of the audio file, which we will get from the audio file library. Now do the same thing for the stereo file. Just copy paste the above buffer and set up the variable names and file path. Now that we have the sound data in a device, we can use it. Sounds are played by sound sources. Sound sources have 3D information, like the listener did. Create a new sound source with glgen sources. Pass it one to create a single source and pass it a pointer to the source index for OpenAL to populate. Modifying sources is similar to modifying the listener, but you use AL source functions like AL source 3F. Since there are multiple sources, you need to provide the source you want to update. You also need to provide the attribute you want to change. In this case, changing position. And we provide three floats describing the position. Follow the same pattern for velocity. To change the single float attributes, use AL source F. Update pitch and gain this way. Since we want regular pitch and gain, we just use a value of 1. To change the integer property, use AL source I. Set the integer to AL looping to false. Set the buffer integer to the source should play from. Do the same thing for a stereo sound source. Copy and paste and update the variables. The positioning data is irrelevant for stereo files. First, let's play our mono sound source. Play a sound source with AL source play function and provide it a source to play. We can query if the device is still playing and loop until it finishes. Since the source state is an integer, we use al get source i and provide it a source source state flag and pointer to the value to update. Loop while the source state is playing. Be sure to update the state within the loop. After the mono source, let's play the stereo source. Copy and paste the mono source playing loop and update it to stereo. After we've played both sounds, we should clean up our resources. Al delete sources to delete audio sources. Al delete buffers to delete audio buffers. Make the current context null, then destroy the context with ALC destroy context. And close the audio device with ALC close device. Run your program and you should hear both sounds play. You can get the sounds from my repository. You can change the position values to hear the sound from different ears. Modifying the position value with a stereo file has no effect, as expected. Because stereo files are typically used for music. To get my project, clone it from GitHub. Here's me doing that on my laptop. I added a .sua file so that you can bypass setting up the linker. Notice the .vs hidden folder isn't in the repository. Open Visual Studio up to generate this hidden folder. Now that the .vs folder exists, copy .sua file using the cp command. Make sure to rename and overwrite the existing .suo file. You'll need to drill down in the .vs folder a bit to find the .suo file to overwrite. After copying, you shouldn't need to set up your linker settings for the project like we did at the beginning of this video. Open Visual Studio, retarget the project if you need to. Build, you'll probably need 
to move the .dll folders to the .exe folder again. An alternative to audio file is Dr. Wave. You can get Dr. Wave from GitHub here. Put it in your My Library Includes folder since it's a header only library. I created Dr. Lib folder for it and pasted the header files from the repository I cloned. In my repository, there's a folder, no GPL dependency, that uses Dr. Wave to load audio. No modifications are needed for Dr. Wave, it just works. It is a header only library, but it has one requirement. You need to define a preprocessor flag so that it will generate function bodies for the linker. Make a .c or .cvp file to include the header-only library. Before including the header, define Dr. Wave implementation. Only do this in the one file as we only want the function bodies here. In your game project, now you can include Dr. Wave and you won't get linker error. This library has many ways to load files. I created a struct that will hold all the data Dr. Wave loads. That is channels, sample rate, total PCM frame count. I created a vector of short ints rather than bytes because the function I'm using to read data returns shorts rather than bytes. I also created a get total samples function that gives the total amount of data for all the channels. I call the Dr. Wave function to open the, and read the PCM frames to short 16. It gives back a pointer to heap allocated array of data. I check if it is null and return if it failed to load. If it passes the failure checks, I resize the PCM data vector of shorts to hold all the audio samples PCM data. This needs to be big enough for stereo files too. Each ear's channel has its own PCM data interwoven. So I just multiply the total number of frames with the number of channels. Now that the vector has enough allocated memory to hold the PCM data, I do a mem copy that copies the loaded samples data into the vector. Mem copy works on bytes, so I multiply the size by 2 since the vector holds shorts, which are 2 bytes rather than 1 byte. After copying, I make sure to free the memory that Dr. Wave allocated. We can now pass the data of this vector directly to OpenAL to fill the buffer. At your AL buffer call, just make sure all the flags like format stereo are correct. Pass the data pointer pass the size of the data, pass the sample rate, OpenAL can handle short 16 data formats, which is why I'm using the AL format mono 16. You can run my sample code to hear this working. So I hope you liked that. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please leave a comment below. If you noticed any mistakes, then let me know. And with that, I hope you have a good day.